relates to society by translating experiences through time and space. It also influences the opinion of people through visual inspiration. Welcome to the Art Express and I am Tulokwe Lamidi. We take her from gallery. Now, Black, an exhibition by Olayemi Fagongwe, brings cautious awareness to who we really are as black people. It celebrates the Afrocentric spirit. It is moving forward by learning from the errors of the past and being profoundly proud of our identity. Now, curated by Nana Shinoike at Art Pantheon Gallery, Lagos. Let's take a look. My name is Ola Yemifa Gumbe. I'm an architect and an artist. So the title of this exhibition is Black. And why was Black chosen? It was, I mean, I was just trying to portray our blackness in a kind of positive light. Because so many, so, so, so most of the times I just realized that we, we don't really take that as a thing of pride. Because most of the times we prefer foreign things over our locally produced things. We prefer foreign hospitals than our own local hospitals. We prefer foreign education over our own local education. And even in the arts, we tend to value the foreign artworks regardless to our own artwork. So how best could we tell our story? How best could we look at this blackness as a thing that is a blessing rather than a curse? How would we look at this that every other person will envy, will envy us? These of us trying to always want to go to the white man's world, why won't they also want to come here? Because we have a lot to offer. Olayemi Fagbongwe is an artist and architect. He was born and raised in Zaria, Nigeria, where he also trained as an architect obtaining his bachelor's at Ahmed Ubila University. He believes that the boundary of what is achievable can be pushed. The spirit is what animates his exhibition, Black. This piece that you see here, the title of this piece, as you can see, is written, they call it Foreign Chiki. Foreign Chiki is actually coined from a house award. And I was looking at something like Unbridled Joy, you understand? So, you could, wait, let's say you go around the piece, you try to see the muscle, it's stretching out in a very unusual way, but like, it's something that is like dancing or something. So, you see this great light of something being positive, trying to exude an energy. So, this particular piece, it's just something that is actually quite dear to me because I was looking at how happy we could be in ourselves and situation. All this piece love with boldness like if you check the you could see this love something and there's like a female form holding a pole and then she's chesting out like it's just like uh it's more of like the it's giving kudos to the feminine the femininity of the work like yeah she's showing love and then she's being bold about the love so it's just more of like how let's say my mom she, she shows so much love to me you get and then she's always bold about it very unapologetic so if you must love, you love unapologetic. So that is one of what this piece is just about, talking about love. In thinking of black as a concept, Fabon will note the riches it suggests. In its various senses, it suggests fullness, Life, pride, dignity, creativity, flair, power, irreducibility, black. My name is Nana 
I'm Atisha Noiki and I'm the curator and founder of Art Pantheon Gallery on New Yemi Fagunbe is an amazing artist. He's an architect and he chose to go into sculpting after he got his master's in architecture from the University of Lagos. I decided to go with this show because I saw a lot of tenacity as of strength. I saw a great movement in Yemi's works. His, his sculptures are just not ordinary. There's so much movement that you can see in each of the works that you just can't take your eyes off them. Every time I look at each piece, I just imagine there was a particular work I love so much called Barali Loyal. And I looked at the way the work bent over and I just imagine myself bending over my, my goals, my limitations and being able to achieve so much. I'm Isu Brudela. I'm an artist, and um, when you look at his work, you could say what the artist is made up of. He's um, a very deep um, artist. You know, couple combining the architecture and visual elements together. When you look at some of the forms, you see how he has been able to distort the normal form into his own way of expression. And the finishing of the works, you know, say a lot. My name is Abiodun Olaku. I'm an artist. I'm uh, with special interest in painting. So from what we've seen today at this inaugural show, I think he, the, the feature is uh, well organized for him, all things being equal. He has lots and lots of potentials to offer the art industry. Uh, it is more remarkable in the sense that this is his first exhibition, which happens to be a solo exhibition. So it's been observed that it's quite courageous of the gallery itself, that's Art Pantheon, to offer him a solo you know, as a take-off. Uh, but uh, I'm very glad that he has not disappointed. The range of work here today is uh, quite interesting and uh, top-notch. Black asserts that we're rich and shouldn't live lives so poor. If we imbibe such a mindset and work with it, Fabongwe seems to be telling us we would move forward. Becoming the first group exhibition by Creators Grid Nigeria is about self-awareness, identity, and how each artist is navigating the world around, featuring painting, photography, and sculptures at the Terra Culture Lagos. and you're welcome to the group exhibition Becoming. So uh, Becoming is about um, growing into yourself as a young artist. It's about really finding your space, finding your own form of expression and really going deep into it. And as a result of that, we have artists that are really, really diverse. And uh, if you look around, you'll see we have a myriad of art works. We have digital art, we have photography, we have um, mixed media, we have paper crafts, we have sculptures, we have oil on canvas, acrylic on canvas. 
we are really trying to to be the gallery that represents artists um, that are very diverse in their forms of expression and we also hope to be the gallery that represents young artists the best and uh, goes the extra mile to make sure that their works are being put on a platform where they can really make um, gainful moves in their careers as such uh, we have 14 artists here all brilliant The exhibition, Becoming, is about self-awareness, identity, and how each artist navigates the world around them to become who they perceive their work to be. My name is Fola B. Fola Demian. I am a photographer, um, and that is my piece. This one to that one, and then a few others. Um, we are a group of exhibitors, we call ourselves the Creator Creed. And my pieces is me just always trying to be different, right? And the five Nera piece, that's like my favorite because it tells a lot of stories. It's telling stories of how when I was young, I really had to always spend five Nera. And then the hand is my friend's hand, the five Nera is my best friend's five Nera, and I've kept it like since. And it just makes me realize that you can actually do more than, ever, more than you ever expect and more than you ever think of. So, I mean, that's like one of my favorite things. My name is Marietta Shunfe Burning, and we are at Becoming, the, the first exhibition of the Creator Street NG Arts Collective. And um, this is one of my, my favorite pieces. Um, she's called Aurora. And I think what the thought process I went through while creating this was basically self-discovery. Finding out who you are, believing in yourself, and realizing that who you are inside is not something to be ashamed of, and something that you should not be ashamed to show and express. Um, so yes, I love color, I love fantasy, I love pointy ears. <laughs> I love lights, I love floral things, just beauty. The works behind me are titled The Past, The Present and The Future. So these actually come together to form who a person is. A person stems from their past, who they are now and who they will be in the nearest future. So here, this artwork represents the past, my past. As you can see, there are different elements of the artwork that are very significant to my past. First of all, it is the turmoil, the turmoil, and then the red. It shows that although that you have problems in your past, you know, there are a lot of difficulties that arise from people's past, and it makes them who they are. by name. So I'm one of the exhibiting artists from Creator Street, Nigeria. This work was actually inspired by the recent happening in the country and all, from the lucky shootings to the unknown gunmen. That is what this particular one is talking about. And it's part of the series called The Trenches We Live In. So it's, um, I named The Trenches We Live In too. The other one down there, um, with 15 air on the mouth, um, it's the trenches we live in one. Um, it's actually, it was inspired by the 2019 Nigerian elections. You know, how people get to tend to um, get shot up because of money and all, selling their votes and all. My name is Chidima Oyewe. I am a multimedia visual artist. So these are some of my works. These are my photographic works. This is called Transcend, and this is called Minora. So Transcend is basically a celebration of blackness. If you look at the colors, black and gold, with a little bit of melanin. These are my hands, by the way. So it's kind of a celebration of blackness, whereby in a world where blackness is taken from, where people 
take and take and take from the black culture, but there's just this lack of appreciation in general, where we are exploited and made to believe that we are less than. So this is kind of a celebration to make people believe that or understand that there is gold woven in your skin as a black person on the black soil. My name is Matiko Precious and my art name is Fresh Works. Well, here is my work and my idea behind this work is just to portray the relationship with kids and the environment. How they relate to their environment, how they reciprocate the kind of things they get from their environment, how they show it to the world. Here is a, a smiling baby with a good laughter on, on, his, on her face. So it's showing how, how the environment got to impress the baby. My name is Ubina Jele. I am a visual artist. I am a sculptor. I, I, I work with wire sculptures. I make all kinds of sculptures from, from pieces of wires. So I have to talk about that. It's a, um, a kudugu. This species of antelope does not, they don't exist in, they don't exist outside South Africa. So. I, I stumbled into the picture on the internet and I just felt like this would make a very good piece for, for me to work on. So that's it. So it's titled Kudu Blue. My name is Peter Energy. Uh, I'm the artist that made this beautiful painting behind me. Uh, the title of the painting is Lost in Eden. And the idea behind the painting is, um, I'm trying to like communicate the mind of a child. You know, children are very uh, inspirational beings. I draw most of my inspiration from children. So Lost in Eden is um, trying to talk, communicate about the heart of a child that is open. Like Eden is a place of peace, like it was before the fall of man, as the Bible records. So Lost in Eden is a world where a child is living in a world of fantasy, where the troubles of life does not trouble the child. And I'm be I believe that if we can really abide or adapt that kind of mentality in our daily lives, it helps us to overcome some obstacles that come our way. Touches on sensitive and current issues such as identity crisis, depression, emotional trauma, alive in Nigeria. The artworks are not limited to traditional canvas painting, but various prints, including photographs. Shrinker's play, Death and the King's Horsemen, is based on actual events occurring in British-occupied Nigeria. The play focuses around the duty of Eleshin, the King's Horseman, to commit suicide in the wake of the King's death the month before. The horse sniffed the stable. Does he not strain at the window? And the back up. The market is the long shopping room of my school in Tolong, New York. And the women are backing up to go. That issue harassed him, slipped into the stew pot while we feasted. We ate it up with the rest of the meat. Oh, hello, William. I have neglected my uh, Still, it is no reason for shedding your tail on this day of all days. Uh, I know the women will cover you in their mask and alarm. Uh, but when the wind blows cold from behind, the vow we know is true, uh, My name is Nanre Adedura. I'm an actor, filmmaker. Olonwiyo happens to be the praise singer to Eleshin or the horseman of the king. And for me, I think I am playing the role of Olonwiyo differently. I played this like four times in a play. 
in several productions, but for the first time, I'm getting another interpretation of my role. Um, Olowunyo seems to be the um, the inner man of Eleshinoba, um, like a thought factor for him. Now, sometimes he can't make decisions on on his own, and Olowunyo comes, you know, in between to let him realize that he's actually going astray, as against what the custom and tradition should be. So Olowunyo for me is that. Um, person you should look out for in the play um, such that he predicted what was going to happen to election but election did not get those red flags right at the market when the women were taking care of him hence he said be weary um, sorry he said um, um, they love to spoil you but you have to be careful the hands of women also weakens the weary my vital flow the last from this flesh is intermingled with the promise of future life. <laughs> All is prepared. It is the duty of the British Colonial District Officer, Simon Pilkins, to stop him. Cheered and egged on by his friends and fellow Yoruba tribesmen and women, Eleshin knows it is his duty to die so that he can guide the king in the afterlife. I play the character of Simon Pilkins, the district colonial officer. A very ignorant character, a person that is completely disregarding of the Yoruba cultures and their customs and traditions. It is uh, it's a quite a complex character to play. Uh, as you know, I'm a complete opposite and the, <laughs> the Wimbu rebel. So. Yeah, but it's great. It's an amazing production. Our director is fantastic. And the play is beautiful. Yeah. Is there anyone out there? What could you be like? No, sir. Why don't you just knock instead of knocking things over? It's the pretty thing. Pilkins and the British consider the act barbaric and illegal. They consider all life sacred, so they aim to stop him. Eleshin's last day on earth is enjoyable, as he marries a young girl for his last earthly pleasure. My new bride, our marriage is not yet fulfilled. When earth and passage wet, the consummation is complete only when there are grains of earth on the eyelids of plastic. <laughs> you stay by me till then. My name is Olaro Simi Fakunde. I'm an actor, I'm a theatre director, I'm a filmmaker, I am a theatre consultant. I'm playing a national bar in Wallachian in Cast Death and the King's Sussman as interpreted and directed by Bolani Austin Peters. Now, Elisha Oba is um, someone who is supposed to be like the horseman to the king, enjoys all the privileges, at least that the king enjoys while he's alive. And it is believed that after the death of the king, after a couple of months, you know, the preparation for the burial of the king takes like about three to four months. Now, that uh, is going to go into a trance where he dies and then transfigures himself into the spiritual realm to then lead the king into the world of our ancestors because it is believed that without him the king is blind and is lost in the land of nowhere. My dog will but his will to die weakens because of this and he doesn't want to die. Pilkin's entry gives Eleshin a way out. Eleshin is arrested and he blames his misfortunes on everyone, but ultimately comes to accept responsibility that he has shirked his own duty. People, my name is Mawion. I play the role of Yaloja in the play The Death and the King's Osma. Well, Yaloja is a diplomat um, and she's the mother of the market. She's the one in charge of the economics of 
that town and um, everything economy surrounds her. And so in the, in the place, she's the one who makes sure, who eggs on election to do the needful. And then when he finally doesn't do what needs to be done, she's the one who still calls him out. <laughs> My name is Ibuko Fasu, the stage manager of Death and the King's House Man. To start with, the play is quite difficult. So we had to first break down the play, you know, and to even make the, other, uh, the, the audience understand the play in the first place, we had to turn all the lines to Yoruba because it's quite, it, it's high, po high poetry. So at some point, to, uh, the first trailer was meant for analysis, breakdown of characters, and everything, you know, why is this character saying this, what is happening in the air, and all those things. So we had to really do that, and to make the play quite authentic, we had to look for, uh, we had to look for white people that could play those roles, so the audience could understand it better. In order to save the honor of the household and the tribe, Eleshin's son, Olunde, commits suicide in his father's place. Stricken with shame and grief, Eleshin commits suicide using his prison chains. My name is Moshit Fatai. I'm an actor and I play Olundi in Death and the King's Horseman, written by Wally Shrinka, produced and directed by Bolanle Austin Peters. Olundi is a promising, bright young man, a medical student, um, who comes home to bury his father. His father is a legend about the, the King's Horseman, and um, per tradition, he's supposed to come back home to bury his father, but something happens that turns the whole thing on its head and that's what the play is about. It's a very interesting character. Death and the King's Horseman is an obvious choice for any thespian. It's, um, it's legendary in, in scope, in name. Everybody knows about it. It's something that a lot of us read when we were in school and for me it's a privilege to be doing this. In trying to direct this, what I did was I made sure that the actors understood each line because it's their understanding of those lines that would enable them portray the required emotions um, and in doing this it was very very important that the audience get an understanding of what is going on because it's very easy to lose people with such deep language <laughs> where we will be drawing the curtain on this edition of the Arts Express. But remember, creativity has no limits because imagination has no boundaries. Wow! Put your mind to work and keep living in the arts. I am Tolokwe Lamidi. Bye-bye.